Welcome back to Must Play Reviews, where today we're diving into the chilling depths of the Resident Evil franchise, a series that's not just survived but has thrived since the 90s. It's known for revolutionizing horror and video games. Each entry has had something unique to offer, making this ranking a challenge. So let's start at the bottom and make our way to the best of the best in survival horror. Starting off the list in last place is Resident Evil 6. When this is the worst of your mainline entries, that's an incredible track record. RE6 was very different at every level. It is more of an action game. One of the more unique things about the game is that you have four separate campaigns that all intertwine at certain points, but each one is very distinct from the other one. Leon's campaign is more of a zombie shooter. Chris's campaign is more of an action-packed special forces style game. Jake and Sherry's campaign gives you the more run away from the big bad like you would have done in past games. And then there's Ada's campaign, which is a blend of all the others. Visually, the game looks great even if the running animation is painful to look at. It's like you're moving fast, but then there's a slow hitch with every other step. It's weird. The story is much more anime than the other games. It's closer to the CG films that they have made in recent years. I believe if they had organized the campaign in chronological order, it would have created a more cohesive story. However, due to its issues, it ranks last on the list. Do you think the chronological change would have made a difference? So this list is a bit strange because every other game on this list is far better than Resident Evil 6. I would put almost all of these games on an equal level besides 6 and maybe the top 3. But since we're ranking them, we've got to put them somewhere. Next up, Resident Evil Revelations 2. So this game was released episodically when it came out. You got to play as Claire and Barry's daughter in one part of the campaign and in the other part you played as Barry and this little girl who has ties to Terra Grigia which is from the first Revelations game. Now, one of the best things about this game is the story. I really don't want to spoil it, but since the game's been out for a while, this one might get you to play it if you haven't already. And that is the villain in this game is Albert Wesker's sister. If you thought Albert Wesker was crazy, wait till you meet her. And the other great thing about both Revelations games is the raid mode. You pick a character, you run through these small little levels fighting enemies, earning points, money to upgrade guns, and so you can get to higher levels and unlock more characters in it. It's enjoyable and addictive. Graphically, the game is pretty good too. It did feature a different look for Claire, but overall, the game looks great. I do recommend picking this one up. If you have not played it before, I think you'll be surprised by it. Next up is the first Revelations game. In this game, you get to play as Chris Redfield, Jill Valentine, and other members of the BSAA. This game takes place in multiple locations, but its most notable is the luxury cruise ship, the Queen Zenobia. Revelations deals with the story of Terra Grigia and what occurred, and the use of a space mirror to wipe out the monsters. There is corruption at the BSAA and other entities. It does have a few different options in terms of gameplay mechanics that separate it from other titles. There is a scanner that allows you to scan enemies and the environment to find hidden items. When you scan enough enemies, you get items from it like health and ammo. This was widely considered the first game since 4 that brought back that real survival horror feeling to it. And interestingly enough, it was a Nintendo DS game when it first came out. It got a big jump in graphics and visuals when it got put on PS4. Resident Evil Zero was originally going to be released on Nintendo 64, but got moved back and released after the remake of the first game on GameCube. Using the same incredible visuals with static backgrounds and highly detailed characters that still look amazing. In Zero, you play as Rebecca Chambers and Billy Cohen. You control both characters simultaneously and can swap between them for some puzzle-solving greatness or frustration. One puzzle early on when they are separated, you have to swap back and forth sending items through a food elevator to get them out of the room that they are stuck in. It's the only game in the series with a dual character approach like this. Using each character together to manage items adds a new level of complexity to the game. And also the storage box is gone. You just leave the gear behind and you pick it up later. The story in Resident Evil Zero 
sets the stage for the events at the Spencer Mansion from the first game and reveals Rebecca's backstory and her arrival at the mansion. The interesting part of the story is how it helps shed light on the evil behind the Umbrella Corporation and its founder, Oswell Spencer. The game is dark and gritty and the last of the original Resident Evil style games with fixed cameras. A lost era and art form. Personally, I think they should make both types of games the new modern style, and the classic fixed camera. They could be done cheaper for smaller titles. Resident Evil 3. This time we step into the shoes of Jill Valentine. I remember my cousin renting this game and we played through the whole thing the first night. The PS1 would get hot and we hadn't saved the game yet. So we just opened the disc tray, let it cool off, closed it and returned to blame. Now it's obvious that the best thing about this game is Nemesis. He is one of the best bioweapons in the series. His relentless assault on the remaining Starvers members was terrifying. As you play the game and turn a corner, you hear the yell of stars as a rocket comes flying past your head. This one did get remade, and it's a great remake with a few exceptions. Its content has been cut even shorter, which is kind of a problem for a game that was already short. Luckily, like most Resident Evil titles, its replay value is high with weapon unlocks and of course the very fun infinite ammo, which it's hard to beat infinite ammo with a rocket launcher. This is also the game that concludes the Raccoon City saga. And its story is a bit weird. It takes place before and after the events of Resident Evil 2, with some characters appearing in both. Resident Evil 5 is an amazing co-op game featuring Chris Redfield and Sheva Alomar on a journey in Africa with a new B.O.W. infection created by Triso, a company with ties to Umbrella and the infamous Albert Wesker. Chris has come to Africa for other reasons as well. Jill is missing and thought to be dead but Chris believes otherwise. Resident Evil 5 is a stunning game to look at featuring a lot of daytime segments. The first for the series. It was bright and sun drenched and the segments of darkness like caves had Sheva or Chris having to hold a light while they fought off the enemies protecting the other so you could pass through. Its gameplay is intense and less hard than before but it's hard to beat for the co-op campaign. The game is short, but the replay value is probably the highest out of any of the Resident Evil games. Leveling up weapons between each chapter makes you want to keep playing to max out every weapon and unlock infinite ammo. And of course, the main villain, Albert Wesker, has become superhuman due to Umbrella's experiments, granting him immunity to all viruses. His mind is twisted and he wants to bring about a new world by unleashing the Ouroboros virus. While RE5 has received mixed reaction from fans over time, it was a significant success upon release. I'd like to know what you thought of Resident Evil 5. Resident Evil 8 is the second game featuring Ethan Winters, and it has one of the most disturbing stories in Resident Evil by a long shot. Kicking off with what seems like a good home life, only to have Chris and the BSAA gun down your wife and take your kid, but everything is not what it seems. Taking you on a dark, nightmarish journey with werewolf-like creatures, a family of vampires, a crazy puppeteer, and a creepy frog-fish type Thing. and of course Carl Heisenberg who looks like Nick Cage all set in a beautiful mountainous snow covered region with an amazing castle and ruins it's the best looking Resident Evil to date the Domitress castle is stunning with marble floors and gold inlay on the walls it looks incredible it also has mercenaries and a great DLC Shadows of Rose which takes place years later as you play as Rose with a third person perspective. And if you got PSVR too, you can play it that way. Capcom patched in a third person mode for the base game. These are great extras that do deserve a bit of praise even though they weren't there to start with. RE8 also brought back the weapon leveling from 4 and 5, using money collected from treasures that you find to increase firepower and other stats, increasing the replay value. Now Resident Evil 7 is the game that brought the franchise back to the forefront of the gaming industry with its dark, gritty FPS gameplay that featured some of the best graphics we had seen in a game at the time. As the first game to utilize the RE engine, RE7 showcased stunning visuals that set a new standard for the series. As Ethan Winters in his first adventure into the nightmare, he hunts for his wife in the Louisiana Bayou. 
who disappeared years before, not knowing if the video he was sent was real. He starts his journey that leads him into a house of a family being controlled by a B.O.W. that looks like a little girl that can produce mold and takes over people and gives them regenerative abilities. Resident Evil 7 brought back that horror element that had been missing since 5, taking a more subdued approach to how many enemies you fight, mostly having the family torment and chase you through the decrepit old Bayou Mansion. It was a brilliant return to that classic survival horror. It was giving players what we wanted to experience again. That fear of not knowing what was around the corner, up the stairs, or just lurking in the shadows. Now we have the game that started it all, Resident Evil 1. This game had three separate releases just on PS1. And because that wasn't enough, we then got the incredible, stunning remake on GameCube that still holds its own today with its visuals, lighting, and character models. It looks incredible, capturing that CG look at the time. We did lose most of the cheesiness of the voice acting though, but some of it still remains. It also introduced a new mechanic with the zombies, Crimson Heads. These guys are a pain. Once you kill a zombie, it has a chance to return, but if you don't burn the body, they come back faster, stronger than before, and they will even chase you through sections of the manor going through doors, which never happened before. The puzzle designs are still masterful. It's not a collection of single puzzles like most games. The whole mansion is the puzzle. It's truly a lost art in game design. It even had two different characters to play Jill and Chris. Chris is the harder version of the game, while Jill is a bit easier with more inventory slots and a lockpick. This game, being the first introduction of Resident Evil and the Umbrella Corporation, has a special place among fans. Code Veronica X was the first game in the series to go full 3D launching on the Dreamcast. It was a visual masterpiece at the time with real-time lighting, lighting up the environment, and casting shadows. At that time, it was something rare to see in games. This is also the second time we got to step into the shoes of Claire Redfield, who gets captured while breaking into an umbrella building searching for her brother Chris. And this is also the first time we get to return to playing as Chris since the first game. And of course, it also sees the return of Albert Wesker, new and improved. The cheese factor is here in this game, mostly coming from Steve, the prisoner on the island that Claire meets. Then there are the Ashfords, Alfred and Alexa, and the story gets strange taking some twists and turns that you just would not expect. Code Veronica sits high on the list with its deep story and great puzzles. It's a masterpiece, but the only way to play it right now is on Xbox through backwards compatibility or the PS3 streaming. This game needs a remake, and from some reports, it's coming and I can't wait. Resident Evil 2 is the game that gave us Leon, Claire, and Ada Wong. With multiple playthroughs, different endings, this game was unique on PS1. With multiple playthroughs, different ending, and one character's playthrough could affect the others. It was such a big game at the time, coming on two separate discs. Leon, by far, has to have the worst first day on a job ever. Claire was just trying to visit Chris on break from college and they are thrown together in the chaos of Raccoon City during the outbreak. After their quick meeting, they are split up. Claire's journey has you rescuing and helping a little girl named Sherry, daughter of Dr. Birkin, who created the G-Virus, which is different from the T-Virus in the first game, even becoming infected himself and turning into a monstrosity. Leon, on the other hand, encounters a mysterious figure named Ada Wong, has to fight a tyrant variant and Birkin as well, all while hunting for a sample of the virus. Most of the game is the same between the two, but they each have their different and unique spots to help create a full story. The gameplay of the original was an improved version of the first game. The new remake uses the RE engine and is from a third person perspective with no fixed camera angles. And it is just simply stunning and intense, deserving its place at number two on the list. And finally, at number one, Resident Evil 4. Leon's journey through the Spanish countryside to rescue the president's daughter is incredible. Launching as an exclusive for GameCube and the reason I bought a GameCube, while most people think this is the first use of the over-the-shoulder perspective in Resident Evil, 
It's not. That goes to Dead Aim. The difference between the two, though, is that Dead Aim was a light gun game that switched to a FPS camera for combat. Resident Evil 4 doesn't do that. And in the original, you had a sight for a laser. No crosshairs, making aiming more difficult but more fun. Now, I love both versions of the game. The remake is a bit different at times, removing the QTEs and opting for more player control and some slight adjustments to the story and level design, which makes the game flow better and works more with the Ada Wong's DLC in terms of story. But without a doubt, encountering the giant controlled by the parasite or the giant salamander in the lake are unforgettable moments, mixing fear with the thrill of victory. It's a rush from start to finish. What more can I say about Resident Evil 4? It's legendary. It's at the top of the list for a reason. It changed survival horror and made it even more popular than before. It refreshed the franchise and set a new standard in real-time visuals. It was a revolutionary title in a time when games were revolutionary. And there you have it, from the dark and gritty beginnings to the revolutionary strides in horror and gameplay. We've journeyed through spine-chilling corridors of Resident Evil mainline series. Each title brought its unique flavor and terror and triumph. Crafting a franchise that's not just about survival, but about the evolution of horror in video games. Whether it's the eerie halls of the Spencer Mansions or the sunlit yet dangerous streets of Africa, Resident Evil has proven time and time again why it remains a titan in the gaming world. So, what do you think of my rankings? Would you rearrange them differently? Drop your thoughts and your rankings in the comments below. And if this rundown has sparked a new interest or rekindled an old passion for the series, Give these games a shot or revisit them to experience the terror firsthand. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to keep up with more content like this. Until next time, remember, every dark corner could hold a new scare or a new story. This is Must Play Reviews signing off.